Jared Poland Fronos Photo.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Printique, and well, my birthday. In honor of my birthday on January 21st, 2022, well, my birthday is January 21st, Printique is offering you 15% off photo book orders with the code Happy Birthday at checkout. If you didn't know, I've been getting photo books from Printique since before I started Fronos Photo 12 years ago. 10 years! Plus two. I've even built a photo book wall at my new house to showcase all my photo stories and memories. I also love giving photo books as gifts. My go-to size is 12 by nine, but the eight by six is also a solid size as well. So if you've been holding off on ordering some photo books, now is the time to do so. Once again, use the code HAPPY BIRTHDAY at checkout to get 15% off until Monday the 25th at midnight. Go get some books. First up, this is classified as photo news. The super huger mega camera giveaway for 2021 is officially over. It's done, man. And now it's time to pick the grand prize winner. And here they are. You didn't get the, the first prize. Mm. But, but you got the, the grand prize. Out of almost 5 million total entries, not to be confused with 5 million people entering, the winner is Todd Schroeder. That's awesome. Who got to spend $4,999.99 of my money because he got the bonus because he owns the presets on anything he wants at Allen's camera. And he decided to go with the Sony a7 IV, Tamron 70 to 182.8, and the Tamron 150 to 500, whatever f-stop that lens is. Is. Now I want to thank everybody who entered and send a huge congrats out to Todd. Thanks, right. Jared. Keep an eye out for when I announce the super huger mega camera giveaway for 2022. <laughs> Just know the link will not be bit.ly slash megafro2022. Don't go there with your speakers on or if you're at work. Someone played a joke. Nice day. Next up, Nikon has officially announced their Nikkor Z400 2.8 VRS with built-in 1.4X teleconverter. As you may recall, I got my hands on a pre-production 400 last week, but wasn't allowed to say much about the lens. Now that it's announced, I can tell you everything that I want to. Like, don't buy it. I, I kid, I kid. I can't do that. It's not like most photographers can afford to buy this one anyway. Let's go over some of the main features. For one, it's a native 400 2.8 for the Z mount. Salty. Two, it has a built-in 1.4X teleconverter that with a flick of the switch allows you to go from a 402.8 to a 560 F4. And if you go into DX mode in the Z9, you will get the equivalent of an 840 millimeter lens. Now, before you people- What do you mean, you people? Come at me with, it's not really 840 millimeters because it's cropping down a 45 megapixel image to 20. No shit. Duh. But for simplicity purposes, you're getting the equivalent effect of 840. You try explaining DX crop modes to beginners. Well, you have a 1.5X crop, so that 18 isn't really an 18, it's a 27, but technically it's not, but in reality it is. You get it? Does that make any sense? It turns from a building into a robot, right? Exactly, keep it simple, no one actually cares. For those of you who are wondering, you can add the TC 1.4 and also a 2X to the 400 and get as much as 1120 millimeters. Now I'm not sure if you can add the 1.4 and the 2X at the same time, but if I had to guess, the answer is probably yes. Now keep in mind, it will be a 1120 millimeter at F8 if my math is correct, because 2.8 plus one stop is four, plus two more stops for the 2X is eight, and yeah, my math is correct. All right. Nikon claims this is the lightest lens of its type with a built-in teleconverter. And again, no shit, it's the only one of its kind. It weighs in at 6.5 pounds or 2,950 grams, whereas Sony's clocks in at 2,895 grams and Canon's RF at 2.9 kilos, which begs the question, how much is a kilo of cocaine? Well, according to this website in Colombia, Medellin. A kilo goes for $1,800, and that same kilo in New York City could go as high as $34,500, but I digress. The lens has a new anti-reflective coating called mesoamorphous, which is superior to nano-crystal coatings of Nikon's lenses in the past. There's new motors called SSVCM, which stands for, get this, Silky Swift Voice Coil Motor, or as I like to call it, Silky Smooth, which kind of reminds me of this guy. 
low on cash. These motors allow for high speed, accurate, and silent focusing, and I can attest to that, it's fast and silent. But to be fair, Canon and Sony have already been doing something very similar in their 400s. Now what those lenses don't have is a gold ring. That's funny how Nikon added the gold ring back, though they call it yellow, I will continue to call it gold. You yellow! As you would expect, the lens is rugged as well as weather sealed, and it feels great in the hands. But how much does it cost? More than my first car. All right, are you ready? Are you sitting down? $14,000. That's $2,000 more than the Canon and Sony's, but this one has a built-in teleconverter, even though I'm not sure that the TC is worth $2,000 more, but the people buying this lens are still going to buy this lens regardless of the price. Will you be buying one? Will you be selling a kidney or two? Let me know down below. And finally, Canon has announced the long rumored EOS R5C with the C standing for Cookie. If you haven't checked out my in-depth preview of this camera, I will leave a link down below, but I will share the top level specs right here, right meow. The R5C is more than just an R5 with a fan built in. It's truly a hybrid stills and cinema camera. When in stills mode, you have the classic Nikon, no, that's, that, that should say Canon, Jared, who wrote this script I did. Anyway, it should have the classic stills menu, but when you flick the switch to video, you enter the cinema world with a much more in-depth menu designed for people who take advantage of everything a cinema camera has to offer. Being that there's a fan built in, you will get unlimited record time even when shooting 8K at 60p, which is a big deal. There's three fan modes. Three! Fans who love you, fans who like you, and Nikon fan people who hate you, but still watch and comment on all of your videos. Tell him, Steve Dave. With the addition of the fan, the camera is roughly an inch deeper in the back and weighs in at a Royale with cheese heavier. Man, they get the metric system. Canon has added a tally light, a multi-function hot shoe, as well as a time code port, but have removed IBIS. Well, why would they remove IBIS? I mean, I understand that some cinema shooters don't want it, but maybe it had to do with space, question mark? Who typed a question mark? Moving on to the video specs, you can shoot 8K and 12-bit RAW up to 60p internally in cinema RAW light. There's full frame 4K up to 120 frames per second, and unlike the R5, you can choose the base frame rate in 120p so it's not baked in at 30 frames per second. You can record in 10-bit 422 XFAVC or MP4. There are three cinema raw modes, HQ, standard, and light, and as I said earlier, unlimited record time. So does it cost $9,000? The answer is no. It only costs $600 more than the R5 and is priced at $44.99, which I think is a pretty good price for what you get. Now, if you have an R5 and you're a still shooter, you don't need the R5 see. If you use the R5 primarily for video and it does everything you need it to do, then stick with it. But if you want everything I said earlier, then this might be the camera for you. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polin, Photo.com. See ya.